Yep, right on. Hi, I'm Dr. Chat Patel. Um, I'm one of the consultants at Queen Victoria Hospital. What I'm going to do is give you a five minute uh, tutorial on the history of jet ventricular jet ventilation and a demonstration of the kit that's used um, for a man manu jet using the cylinders and obviously mushroom as well. Right. Um, introduce yourselves guys. So I'm Naomi Lucas, I'm, I'm a consultant anaesthetist at Queen Victoria Hospital. And I'm Ben Perry, I'm an unsafe registrar at the Queen Victoria Hospital. Okay. So jet ventilation has been around for a while. Um, back in the 50s and earlier, uh, people used to use oxygen insufflation by just popping a cannula through the trachea and uh, insufflating with some oxygen. The disadvantage of this was obviously that um, you wouldn't get rid of CO2. Um, it wasn't until 1967 when Sanders came up with this dedicated bit of kit, the Sanders Jet Ventilator, which is over there. <laughs> you can edit that bit back. So this is the Sanders Jet ventilator. Um, as you can see, it's got a dial with a variable pressure from 0 to 4 bar. It's colour coded as well, so for small babies, small infants, and then uh, adults. And you adjust it by using this knob at the back and then tweaking it and turning it until the, you get the desired pressure. Connected to a bit of tubing, which is then connected to a Ravison catheter. So to carry on with the history, so in 67, Sanders came out with this. It wasn't until about 70, 1971 when a guy called Spirel actually used the jet ventilator on dogs and then in humans to show that actually using jet ventilation you can get rid of CO2 as well as oxygen occupation. And then it wasn't until 1995 that Ravison came out with a dedicated cannula for transfer jet ventilation. Until then, there was makeshift tubing and cannulas with three-way taps, which obviously, in the ideal world, um, isn't the best option. So, in 1985, when Ravison came out with his cannula, um, it made jet ventilation quite popular after that. Um, there's some key features to this the cannula. First of all, it's made of Teflon, compared to normal plastic for a Venflon. Uh, you can see an angled flange, and um, it's also got a 15mm Portex connector and a lure lock inside. And one of the key features of this cannula is, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a little hole just there, and there, about half a centimetre from the tip. Do you know the purpose of that? Let me demonstrate. What happens when you jet ventilate something? So if you turn up the hose pipe in your, in your garden with water, you can see the ripping action on the tip of the hose pipe. And so when you get, this is what happens. Now you don't want to do that inside your trachea. So the purpose of this little hole at the end of the cannula is really to keep it in the midline so you don't get any intratracheal damage. Comes in three sizes, 16 gauge for the little babies, it's all color coded, 14 gauge for small infants, and then 13 gauge for the adult. Um, so, inserting one of these, you'd normally infiltrate the skin with uh, some local anaesthetic, a couple of mils, and then you can have the local anaesthetic attached to this cannula in the syringe as such. I normally do this from the right hand side, of, uh, left hand side of the patient. Fill the cricoid, get your mark and then just go in at an angle. You want to go at 90 degrees. If you think about it, the shortest distance into the trachea is going to be perpendicular to the skin, not at an angle like that. If you go at an angle, you're more likely to cause uh, trauma and obviously go into a different plane where you can get surgical emphysema and false tracks. So get your cricoid, pop it in. You'll feel the pop normally. Once you, then you aspirate, obviously it's difficult to demonstrate this here, but 
once you aspirate, if you've got the local anaesthetic in, you'll get the bubbles if you're in the trachea. In which case, you then hold the, trache- hold the cannula still and then just railroad the cannula over and then pull that out. Whatever you do, don't let go of the ravison catheter because the patient is likely to cough and they'll cough it out. So hold that in. The next thing you do is secure it. But before you could do that, before you do that as well, you do three checks to make sure you're in the right place. First one, with that local anaesthetic or saline or whatever, in your syringe, reconnect it to the lure lock and aspirate. You should get the bubbling through that. That demonstrates that it's in the trachea. Secondly, your patenography tubing. Remember the patient's still awake, so well, if you're doing this selectively, um, you can get the patient to breathe in and out. That means you've got CO2 on the trace. So that's your second confirmation that the tube's in the right place. Now the third confirmation is really to see which direction the tube's in, because it could have flipped back on the posterior wall of the trachea and it could be pointing north. So then if you, once it's secured, we'll assume this is, and obviously tie it, you then connect your sanders. I'll hold it for a second while we do that. And then you can check your dial. Initially, you want to set it at half a bar, just to test the integrity of the circuit. Get to your half bar, and then for normal breath, it would be two seconds on, four seconds off. One, two. If the patient's awake and you do this, you just have to tell them that they might cough a little bit. With half a bar, you're not really going to see any chest movement, but as you can see, you can see the air going through that. Um, Then you know that it's in the right direction. If for any reason it had flipped back on itself and it was pointing north, you'll get a <coughs> noise coming out of the mouth rather than uh, a nice uh, um, flow of oxygen going south. Okay? So that's initial setup for your jet ventilation using a Sanders jet ventilator. Now, moving on to the Maestro. Now, this allows you to do high-frequency jet ventilation. Um, very easy uh, in terms of the, the, the controls. You've got an alarm, you've got an auto mode, manual mode, and start. FiO2 pressure, and this alpha dial basically control, controls the variables that you want to adjust. So, for the purpose of this demonstration, I've already preset it at my, what I normally set it at, which would be usually a frequency of about 100 breaths per minute, FiO2 of 100 and a pressure of about one bar. Okay, so then just to start it, you can see the movement in the bag at the top. Usually for 100 to 200 frequency is fine, same. And the pressure, I normally go between one and two. Obviously if you're gonna laser, then you wanna drop the FiO2 down, which you just do with this bar. Okay, now if you wanna just play with it so that See the difference in what happens if you increase the frequency to 200. Now you can see using the bag that even frequency of 200 isn't really going to cause any barrier to work. Um, and then if you increase the pressure to 2 bar, and you can adjust that as you anesthetize the patient and your um, trying to get good chest movement. Um, obviously with this you're not going to see CO2 at the moment. Okay, so now if we change this to manual mode 
and then we press start. Each time you want to take a breath, you just press start. So now this replaces your Sanders jet ventilator, and you can do this manually in the same way. And likewise, in which case, if you're going to an adult, you normally go to three and a half, four bar. So if we go up to three and a half, four bar on this. One, two, one, two, three, four. So once again, two seconds on, four seconds off, gives you 10 breaths a minute. Yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four, and so forth. Um, with this, you've actually got another cannula, not cannula, or a tracheal tube. So with this, it allows you to adjust the distance to the lip, and this marker then it just allows you to pop it in there. At the set, set it at the, set, at the lips, and you jet through there, and this is the capnography, so you can actually get CO2 um, measurement as well. And that's it, in a nutshell. Any questions? Thank you very much. Cool.